So that would get annoying. 2012 Chevy Impala. 3.6 liter. It's got the dashboard clicks. It goes away. Sometimes you can mess around with this right here. So if your car's making this noise, you'll appreciate this video. So if you're watching this, more than likely you've probably got one of these cars and it's probably making that noise. Uh, the cause of the noise is part of the HVAC system. It's part of your heater. So most of these cars have four different actuators that can make this noise. Some of them have more, some have less, depending on whether it's got separate zones, passenger and driver's side. This car would have one extra one. They all sound the same when they go bad. Uh, they all essentially do the same thing. So let's uh, let's figure out which one's making the noise on this one. So the first thing we want to do to gain access to a couple of the motors, I suspect it's on this side. There's a couple on that side underneath the steering column on the inside, uh, but you can hear the noise coming from here. So we want to open up this glove box, and then up at the top of the glove box, there's a couple little tangs that hold this from, they stop it from coming open any farther. You should be able to just push this down with your hand there, and then it falls out of place here. Now, for purposes of filming, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to remove these perimeter screws as well as these three Torx screws right here, and that'll remove the glove box from the cover. It'll leave the cover in place, but it'll give us a little more room to get inside here. So the four perimeter screws are just your common Phillips head, and they're real short. These three screws in here are a T20 Torx, and they actually hold the latch. They kind of sandwich the uh, glove box with the latch and then with this part of the glove box. Should be able to just lift this right out of here. And we can leave this in there, but it gets this out of the way. And it gives us access up inside to look at the uh, actuators. So with the glove box out of the way, we look up in here, and right away we see here's an actuator right here. And then there's another one up here. That one right there is the one that I've found to be the most common one to fail, and that's your fresh air or your uh, your uh, recirculation um, actuator. And that's right here. So this would be your fresh air, and this would be your, your recirculation. So when you switch between those two, that's when that one right there is actuated. Uh, but let's, uh, let's see if we can get this thing to make some noise here for us so we can sort out this problem. Okay, there we go. Let's see now. Let's put a finger on it. No, that's not it. Okay, I can feel it pulsing from there, so let's do this. I'm just going to unplug the wiring connector, and it stopped. So that was a pretty simple diagnosis. Okay, I apologize about the camera angle, but it's uh, pretty difficult to film and, and remove this. But all I'm using is a little quarter-inch stubby gearless ratchet with a 5.5. And I'm going to turn these guys out.
this gear right here that you guys are seeing, all this is, is that's just uh, to slow the glove box down. So when you open the glove box, it opens nice and soft. Okay, there's the second one. Now we should be able to slide this guy out. There it is. It's always a good idea to do a quick parts comparison. This is the one we took out right here. And this is our Dorman aftermarket part. Just make sure they're similar if not the same and that's the part number now there's a few different ones so um, I think there's two different part numbers for these but sometimes this actuator will actually fit also over there and maybe maybe up there as well and then there's a different style actuator that's right inside of here so let's uh let's get this thing put into place all we got to do is fit that onto the shaft and then line up the holes. There's one one uh, alignment dowel, and uh, we should be able to get this thing right together. Again, I apologize for the lack of better camera angle, but this is kind of difficult to even see myself here. So okay. can't see that lower hole Whoop. knocking you guys all over the place here There's no torque specs on this, they're just tiny little screws going into plastic, so just snug them up. And let's plug in our electrical connector. Can't see it. Okay. There it is. Installed. So off camera, I let the car run until it got up to temperature because one of the complaints this customer had was that the passenger side vents didn't blow hot air. And it's September, it's starting to cool off here in Michigan, so she wanted that taken care of. And I assumed that it was the Blendor motor actuator that we heard make a noise. So uh, sure enough. It's up to temperature, so she's going to be happy. So not only is that noise gone, but she's got heat again. Chevy Impala, passenger side Blendor actuator. If you guys found this video helpful, hit thumbs up. Maybe check out my other content. Hit subscribe. Thank you for watching. I appreciate the support. A little bonus footage. I thought maybe we'd take this apart just so we can see the, uh, the fault inside. I'm just going to break these tabs off because this is no good. Oh, right here.
plastic gears. Have a look right there. That is it right there. Plastic gears every time I've taken a handful of these apart. That's why it makes that's why it breaks, that's why it makes noise. So that being said, if you were to take this apart a little nicer than I did and you could source this gear, which I doubt you could, but if you could, you could fix that part. Uh, nonetheless, I think it was only like a $35 or $45. I'm not sure how much it was. I'll put a link of it. Uh, I'll find this on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys.